This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skid. What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, it goes without saying that I absolutely love hacking gadgets. Now, obviously, the Flipper Zero is an absolutely phenomenal hacking gadget, but this guy runs at about $170, which is not always approachable for everyone. But not everybody wants to spend a ton of money to make gadgets, and you really shouldn't have to. Well, today, I'm going to run through a whole bunch of DIY hacking tools you can make yourself. Now, some of these can cost dozens of dollars, like this souped up Ponigachi running the Fancy Gachi project. It's got a color screen, which is super cool, and it does some really, really cool stuff. Hey, even if that's too expensive, for about 10 bucks, we can grab this M5 stick and again, do some pretty cool stuff. And hey, I get it, times are tough. Maybe you don't have 10 bucks to go towards something like the M5 stick. Please, sir, I want some more. DIY hacking tools. What? You don't even have to. For $2, you can get this ESP32 C3 Super Mini. And again, with the right software and know-how, you can do some pretty great stuff with it. So today, I'm going to show you how to make your very own hacking tools, starting with really inexpensive, going up to honestly pretty reasonable. Now, all of these tools are going to cost substantially less than a Flipper Zero, and the process of making them yourselves, you're going to learn an absolutely ton of great skills in the process. Hey, just because we're doing it ourselves does not mean it has to be difficult. It's actually all pretty simple. So let's get at it. All right, so right off the top, we're making these tools to learn things from them. We're not trying to make anything malicious. We don't test anything we don't either own or have direct permission to test. Doing otherwise is illegal and kind of a dick move. So remember, don't be a skid. And for those of you who don't know, skid means a script kitty, which really just uh, explains a really low level person who makes malicious things and uses them inappropriately. Don't let that be you because no one likes that guy. Now, one of the first things we're going to take a look at is one of my favorite things in the entire world, and it's an ESP32. Now, this is the ESP32 Super Mini. Now, why is it called the Super Mini? Well, because it's Super Mini. It's extremely small, but don't let that fool you. This thing is extremely capable for the size. I even printed this super tiny little case made by ZR Kraken again, so you can throw this bad boy on a keychain if you'd like. So obviously the question that everyone's asking is, what does it do? Well, we're gonna take this unsuspecting little keychain and turn it directly into a little teeny tiny hacking device that you can control with your phone. All right, let me show you how it works, but not before this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB design, manufacture, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and more. Anytime I'm a project, PCBWay is always there to help me make it as easy as possible and come out absolutely perfect and don't forget the module store i actually hopped on there for the first time in a month or so and there are so many new so many cool things on there so no matter what your project is what kind of hacking tool you want to make doesn't matter pcbway's got you covered so head on down to pcbway.com for a free instant quote thank you so much for the continued support you guys are awesome let's get back at it all right so first things first what does it take to turn this little guy into an elite hacking device well Really, all you got to do is take a USB-C cable that carries data. Always make sure your cables carry data. I have this almost every day. Someone's like, oh, it's not working. This doesn't work. And it's because they've got a crappy USB cable. So make sure it carries data. So USB 32, plug that sucker in. And now we're going to flash it using our PC. So let's hop on down to the desktop. So I guess you might be asking, what are we going to flash onto our ESP32? None other than Ghost ESP. So with our ESP32 plugged in, we're going to head on over to flasher.spookytools.com. Now, you'll notice down at the bottom here, if you want to learn more about Ghost ESP, I've got an entire video on it, which is really cool. If you have any problems with any step on this or just want to learn more, that's the video for you. So we're gonna select our board, which is the ESP32 C3. Now make sure you know what version of the board is, wherever you bought it from, it should tell you in the description. Uh, we're gonna check our custom board, which is the generic board, and then go ahead and click flash. We're gonna select it right here from the uh, little pop-up over there. It's on COM8, I know that. Click connect, and yeah, you're just gonna wait for it. Serial port opened, erasing flash takes a second or two, but as soon as that's done, this thing's kind of off to the races. A few moments later. Hey, here we go, and it's installing, and actually, the C3 is a really great chipset, and it flashes 
remarkably quickly. So give it a second and it'll get done in a minute. More moments later. I actually think that was less than a minute. And once it says serial port closed, you're done. All right, so we'll close out a desktop and we'll take a look at exactly how this works with our phone. All right, so as long as the ESP32 is getting power, it's going to be transmitting its own Wi-Fi that we can connect to. All right, so as soon as that started, all we have to do is go to our Wi-Fi and we're going to select there. And we're going to wait for it to pop up. There is GhostNet. We'll connect to it. Password is GhostNet, capital G, G-H-O-S-T, capital N, N-E-T. If I spelled that correctly, click join and this should connect. Did I spell it wrong? Join. There we go. So just in case you thought you put the password incorrect, always try it again. Clearly I did it wrong the first time. So these things happen. All right. So once we have that done and we're connected, we're going to go to ghostesp.local and that's going to load up the entire command structure for this thing. So this is the setup menu and this is where you can kind of start some of the other stuff. Now we have some miscellaneous settings where you can actually hook up GPS to this. So you can do things like war driving and Bluetooth war driving, which is pretty fun. If we scroll down, we are not connected to a Wi-Fi because as soon as we connect this to Wi-Fi, it's going to disconnect our phone. We're just using this as a setup right now. Um, so you can set up an evil portal or a captive portal. These are one of those things that, again, I always tell people to be extremely careful. Whenever you're logging into a public Wi-Fi, never, ever, ever give your personal credentials because it could be a captive or evil portal and you don't want to get your credentials stolen that way. So HTTPS is something that's super important if you're logging onto a network. So keep an eye out. Yeah, you can even print on a printer with Ghost ESP, which is pretty cool too. It does have RGB settings if your ESP32 happens to have an RGB light on it. And yeah, it's a really, really cool project. All of this is covered in the video that I linked before, but let me rattle off a full list of features here. Spooky's actually added a ton of cool stuff to this project since I actually covered it in the video. So let's go over some of the features it has. So for Wi-Fi, it has access point scanning, station scanning, so it scans for devices and for routers and access points. It will do a beacon spam like the rickroll spam where it'll basically show up a whole bunch of wireless access points to anybody who looks um, it does a deauthentication attack which you can use to try to capture packets let's see what else evil portal so we've got all those things covered again only test your own devices we're just kind of trying to learn how cybersecurity works and what tools hackers have that are potentially being used against us as your body grows bigger, your mind must flower. It's great to learn, because knowledge is power. Now, what's really cool about the ESP32 is a lot of them, almost all of them, have Bluetooth as well. So this also has BLE features, such as BLE scanning, BLE packet capture, BLE war driving, which is where you drive around and it attaches GPS coordinates to whatever Bluetooth device it finds, and it has a BLE detector. So it can detect BLE spam, which was a big problem back when iPhone and iOS there were BLE spams all over the place and people would just be bombarding your device with connection attempts. So yeah, that's Ghost ESP, and that's probably the least expensive way to get into some sort of hacking device that you can make yourself. All right, so from here on out, I'm actually gonna focus a little bit more on the devices and what they do, and a little bit less on how to make them yourself, because most of these are either super, super simple, or I've already made a video on how to make them, so I don't need to rehash all of that right now. All right, so this next batch of devices are all ESP32 based, so they're gonna have very, very similar functionality. However, there are a ton of different tools installed onto all of the different ones that I have so we can take a quick look at all of them. So let's switch to the top down camera and take a look. All right, so the first device I want to take a look at is this guy right here. This is the Lilygo T-Embed CC1101. And on this we have installed Bruce. So Bruce is a really cool little firmware that does, you know, similar Wi-Fi hacking and stuff as the rest of the devices here. And I can give you a quick once over. So we've got Wi-Fi, BLE, RFID, IR and NRF24, but you have to add the NRF24. It doesn't actually come with it. Let's see, moving on over, you could run scripts like bad USB and there's a bunch of other stuff. So this is Bruce running on the Lilygo T embed. Again, I have this featured in another video. It is a great kind of flipper zero alternative. If we pop it open, can we do this without the magnets breaking? Ugh. There we go. We can see what's inside there. It's got a nice big battery. It's got NFC on it over here. Um, and yeah, it's a great little device. And I think my battery just died. Sorry, guys. I had thought this was charged. Great device. This thing, I think, is about $50 now. So if you're looking for something that's fun and small, definitely a great option to go with right here. 
Now, if we move on, this is a great little device right here. Now, I was introduced to this a while ago, and I never really kind of figured how cool this was, but this is what we call a cheap yellow display. As you can tell, it's yellow. I printed this awesome little case, and it's, I think, about $10 on AliExpress, and it's an ESP32 with a touch screen on it. And we can go through and check out some of the stuff going on here. This is running ESP32 Marauder by Just Call Me Coco. I have done so many videos on ESP32 Marauder. So if you wanna check out any of those videos, it'll show you exactly how all that stuff works, including, I think I just did the latest version of Marauder like a month ago. Again, very, very cool. And this is super, super inexpensive. The one drawback is it does need power. So if you don't have an external power source for it, this is a little buggy. But again, I love this device for how cheap it is, and there's a ton of different things you can install to it. It's not just Marauder. So if you're looking for a fun little thing to carry around with you, this guy is awesome. Now, moving on is something I haven't showed before. This is actually the M5 stick. So we've got on here right now, we are running, let's see, this is running Nemo. So Nemo is a fantastic firmware, especially for the M5 stick, because you'll notice this thing is incredibly tiny. It is smaller than anything I have ever used before. And they managed to cram all the same functionality of the other firmwares into a UI that actually works pretty well for the form factor. It's very, very cool. And the screen's about the same size as it is on the M5 card pewter, which is small but readable. So there's a lot of stuff we can do on here, and it's really, really clever how they made everything work. We reboot, we'll get our opening screen again, M5 Nemo. So again, very, very cool. And the way they have the controls working, there's a button on top, a button on the bottom. I, I know this has a microphone in it as well. And I believe that those two little holes right there are IR. So this guy, for how small and how cheap this is, I think, again, this is like 10 bucks. It has a lot, a lot of options to it. And what's really nice is anything it's M5, they have the M5 flasher and the M5 launcher. So you can actually switch between firmwares and it makes it extremely easy to download firmware. So also speaking of M5 devices is this guy right here. I love this. I'm actually gonna restart it because there we go. The other one has a really cool splash screen. It has red lights on the side that light up. And this is the Evil M5 Core 2 project. This project is absolutely fantastic. I love this project. Let me rattle through some of the stuff that he's added because of all of the firmwares, this one might be the most capable one. So let me go run through all of the cool things this can do. And again, we're gonna preface all of this is that we're only gonna be testing our own networks or what's nice is this has a lot of countermeasures that it can do as well. This can do things like sniff out Bluetooth skimmers. So anything that's connected to like an NFC reader that could be potentially trying to steal your credit card, this guy can detect it. So it's very, very cool. It does, I'm just gonna rattle off some of the things it can do. It does do a remote web server. It does probe sniffing. It does a karma attack. Now a karma attack actually spoofs a known network. So your phone connects to a network and then the hacker goes through and actually tries to copy that network. So later on, your phone will automatically try to reconnect to this fake network. Then if you do connect to that network, anything you send through it obviously goes directly to the hacker and that's no good. Now what really sets apart the Evil M5 project is they have some brand new features that I've never really seen done before. Like they actually have a Telnet high interaction honeypot setup. So somebody can actually log into this thing and think it's actual Telnet which is absolutely wild. They also do network hijacking. So there's a DHCP starvation attack. They have a rogue DHCP server that can take DHCP requests after the starvation and it can respond with malicious configurations. This thing is downright diabolical. It's got a reverse TCP tunnel and a full network scan. This is probably my favorite. I love this little guy too. It's got a magnetic, oh, whoop, I didn't have that. Didn't need this clipped in. Let me pull those pins out before I break this thing. Eh get off of here because this is magnetic so it just kind of sticks on like that it's very very cool this is it's actually a charging base it's got its own battery it's got ir it's got bluetooth it's got wi-fi it's got just about everything you can need in this cool little form factor again i love my m5 devices they've done a fantastic job so those were some really quick and easy esp32 based devices and i absolutely love the esp32 but the problem is they all kind of do similar stuff let's move on to something it's not esp32 based okay so this is going to be what we call our gachi platform which is basically a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. Some of these are two, some of these are the ones, but it doesn't really matter too much. And 
either a Waveshare e-ink display upside down, or in this case, this is actually a Pimeroni Display Hat Mini, and it even has buttons, which makes this a little bit more useful as well. But let's start off. This is the basic Ponygachi. It's not powered on. It doesn't really matter. But so what this cute little guy actually does is it will go around and scan all of the nearby access points. When it finds one, it'll send what's called a deauthentication packet, which effectively asks any device connected to that AP to disconnect from it. When that happens, of course, the device will try to reconnect to it. And if you intercept that information, which is what the Ponegachi does, you can use that information to try to decrypt the password. What's important is if you run this as a test on your own network, you can tell if your own passwords are actually strong enough to resist this type of attack. Also, it's really good to know if your access points or your router is actually susceptible to this attack as well, because if you have the correct security set up, this shouldn't even work. And again, only run these things on your own network. And this is purely for educational purposes only. It's just a really interesting way to learn how hackers can go and find vulnerabilities on your very own network to exploit and gain access. So again, be vigilant. This is the original and this is kind of the more boring version. Now this right here, this is what we're calling the fancy gachi. So this is the Pimeroni display hat. It does all the same things, but it looks really, really cool. And it's even got, let me restart this real quick. Um, I always forget how to do this, but it's even got a splash screen. So turn it off, turn it back on, make sure it's turning on, here we go. And if we give it a second, we'll actually see a really cool splash screen, brand new for this project. And yeah, we got this fun little splash screen. It's actually animated. It's very lightly animated, but yeah, it is super, super cool. I love this project. They've done a great job with it. Moving on from this setup, I can take my finger off the light because it turns off now. We're going to go to or kind of a different direction for the platform of the Ponygachi. So this is just a Ponygachi. This is actually what I carried to DEF CON, but now we have Bjorn on it. What's cool about Bjorn is it's kind of the opposite almost of a Ponygachi because this one you're going to connect to your own network and it's going to go through and run network vulnerability scans. So you can find out if you accidentally have an SSH port open somewhere or if there's an open share or something that's going to be a potential attack vector that a hacker could exploit. This guy can save you from it. So I absolutely love this project. They have been doing a ton of work. I did an entire video on Bjorn. I absolutely love it. And you guys should check them out and download you know all of these projects again the developers put so much work into these this has a full web ui it has so many great features on it it's such i i was following this project for probably a year before it came out but this little guy is fantastic i absolutely love it these are all basically what we're calling a ponigachi framework so we've got on this one yeah this is a raspberry pi 2 and then the uh Pimeroni display hat and then this is a Pi Sugar battery. Um, this is a Pi Sugar 3 on this one, which actually works really, really well straight out of the box with the Ponygachi firmware and the Fancy Gachi firmware because it actually has a battery meter on here, which before you had to install as a separate plugin. And it's not hard to work on these things, but if you've never really messed around, uh, especially in like SSH and stuff, it's a little complicated, but end of the day, this is a fantastic project and I absolutely love them. So yeah, those are a few little DIY projects that you can use to create your very own hacking tools. Some are more complicated to make like the Fancy Gachi or the Ponegachi, and some of them were so simple, like the M5 burner software makes it virtually like impossibly easy to make any tools on those M5 platforms. But I promise you, if you take the time out to make either Ponegachi, Fancy Gachi, Bjorn, you will learn a ton of extremely, extremely useful stuff, especially on the Raspberry Pi platform. Because remember, just like the ESP32, the Raspberry Pi platform and the Raspberry Pi operating system is extremely versatile and yeah, we're making kind of fun hacking tools, but you can do literally anything on those things. I've probably made like 10 different projects just using the Raspberry Pi Zero, and they all do completely different things. It's such a great platform. So if you can find an excuse to learn it, definitely take the time to do so. So which of those projects was your favorite? Or did I miss something and you want me to cover it on a future episode? Leave a comment down below. As always, you guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much for watching. Again, like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. We'll catch you next time.